Let's take a look at Global Information Systems. Global Information System, GIS, is an information system that works across national borders. In other words, a GIS is an information system for managing global operations, supporting an international company's decision-making processes, and dealing with complex variables in global operations and decision-making. With a GIS in place, an international company can increase its control over its subsidiaries and better coordinate their activities, thereby gaining access to new global markets. A GIS can be defined along two dimensions, control and coordination. Control requires a centralized architecture for data, standardized definitions used across the organizations, standard formats for reports, defined behaviors for different processes, and performance tracking systems. Coordination requires a decentralized architecture for data. It also requires standardization within departments, the abilities to communicate these standards to other departments, collaboration systems and technologies that support information communication and socialization. The trade-off between the amount of control needed and the amount of coordination needed defines the organization's globalization strategy. GISs have two basic components, a global database and information sharing technologies. Currently, international companies can use a variety of technologies for integrated GIS. Depending on the system's use, a GIS might consist of a network for email, remote data entry, audio, video, computer conferencing, and distributed databases. They offer electronic data interchange standards, encryption, secure email, data synchronization, and other services. An information system manager faces design and implementation issues when developing a global network. An information system manager must determine the best communication media to meet global performance and traffic needs, such as fiber optics, satellite, microwave, or conventional phone lines. In addition, an information system manager must choose the best transmission technology for the global network's needs. With asynchronous transmission, they do not have to be connected at the same time, as is true for email. Information system managers must also consider the company's objectives when determining network architecture. The network's main function is to allow users to share information. While making these decisions, information systems managers should keep in mind that standardized software and hardware are the ideal but not always feasible. As for using the same software in other countries, that becomes more complicated because of differences in language, business methods, and transborder data flow, or TDF, which is subject to restrictions on how the data can be captured and transmitted. TDF consists of national laws and international agreements on privacy protection and data security. GIS must be capable of supporting complex global decisions. They deliver products and services across national borders and are usually centrally managed from their headquarters. GIS, like an information system, can be classified according to different kinds of managerial support it provides, operational, technical, or strategic. The complexities of global decision making mean that GIS has some functional requirements that differ from a domestic information system's requirements. Implementing a GIS can be difficult because countries differ in culture, politics, social and economic infrastructures, and business methods. Using information systems on a global scale is more challenging than doing so on a local scale. There are four types of global organizational structures. Multinational organizations, global organizations, international organizations, and transnational organizations. The organization structure usually determines the architecture of its GIS. Let's discuss each of these structural types. In a multinational structure, production, sales, and marketing are decentralized and financial management remains the parent company's responsibility. Local hardware and software vendors influence which applications a multinational company chooses. 
organization with a global structure, sometimes called a franchiser, uses highly centralized information systems. Fortunately, the integration needed to manage production, marketing, and human resources is difficult to achieve with a global structure because of the heavily reliance on headquarters. An organization with an international structure operates much like a multinational corporation, but subsidiaries depend on headquarters for more processes and production decisions. In an organization with a transnational structure, the parent company and all the subsidiaries work together in designing policies, procedures, and logistics for delivering products and services to the right market. Offshore outsourcing is an alternative for developing information systems. The widespread availability of the internet, improved telecommunication systems, and reduced cost of communication and increased bandwidth have made offshore outsourcing more attractive for all types of organizations. A GIS plays an important role in supporting offshore outsourcing. Companies planning to use GISs should analyze these problems and try to address them. The following factors can hinder the success of a GIS. A lack of standardization can impede the development of a cohesive GIS that is capable of sharing information resources across borders. Cultural differences in values, attitudes, and behaviors play an important role in using GIS. Diverse regulatory practices can also impede the integration process. As mentioned earlier, before adding a GIS, international companies must take into consideration the telecommunication infrastructures of the companies where subsidiaries are located. When forming integrated teams, companies must consider the nature of each culture and the differences in skills in other countries. Cultural and political differences can affect the cooperative environment needed for global integration.